This is the Portal Podcast with Bob Colbert. I'm your host, Bob Colbert. Maybe wondering why we're an hour late uh, getting the podcast. Well, when I came in to the studio and uh, started working on trying to get the uh, this podcast recorded, my uh, AMD graphics card had expired. So Streamlabs wouldn't let me record my podcast until I updated my driver. So that took a little bit of time. Wasn't expecting that. If you remember, a couple of weeks ago, I had my server go down, or maybe it was last week, I had the server go down. So that was unfortunate. (laughs) So it looks like we got a few gremlins starting out at the beginning of this year on the podcast so uh anyway uh makes you want to take a shot of bourbon (laughs) a little early in the morning for that but sure so uh let's see where we are so here in los angeles it's a beautiful day saturday and i hope your day is going well so far uh in the country wherever you are uh in this country or anywhere in the world. So last week, uh, we had covered the Temple of Vespavian. So this week, we will be discussing now a church called Santa Cosmo e Damiano. It used to be, back in the days of ancient Rome, uh, the Temple of Romulus. Uh, It's located on the Palatine Hill, uh, it's thought to have been dedicated to Valerius uh, Romulus, who is the deified son of the Emperor Maxinius, so or known as the Temple of Romulus. <clears throat> but today it's a church, Catholic church. So let's go ahead and go to the video, and I'll catch you on the other side. The Basilica of Santi Cosma e Damiano is a church in the Roman Forum, parts of which incorporate original Roman buildings. The circular building at the entrance into the Forum, which is not used today, was built in the early 4th century as a Roman temple, thought to have been dedicated to Valerius Romulus, deified son of the Emperor Maxentius. The main building was perhaps the library of an imperial forum. It became a church in 527 and contains important but much restored early Christian art, especially in its mosaics. 
Today, it is one of the ancient churches called Tituli, of which cardinals are patrons as cardinal deacons. The current cardinal deacon of the Titulus, Cosme et Damiani, is Beniamino Stella, created cardinal on the 22nd of February 2014. The Basilica. All righty. Uh, so I'll start my normal reading. So the Basilica of Santa Cosma at Damiano is a ticket particular church in Rome. And what is a particular church? Okay. In the Catholic Church, a particular church is a church in Rome that is assigned to a member of the clergy who has created a cardinal. These are Catholic churches in the city within the jurisdiction of the Diocese of Rome that serve as an honorary designation symbolizing the relationship of cardinals to the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. All right. Got to go back. All right. So uh, the Basilica of Santa Cosmo di Amiotto is, as it is, is a particular church in Rome, Italy. The lower portion of the building is accessible through the Roman Forum and incorporates original Roman buildings. Uh, but the entrance to the upper level is outside the Forum. The circular building located at the entrance of the Forum that you see in the picture there uh, which now houses a small archaeological exhibition, was possibly built in the early 4th century as a Roman temple, which may have been dedicated to Valerius uh, Romulus, deified son of Emperor Maxinius. It's often referred to as the Temple of Romulus. The main building was perhaps the library of an imperial forum, became a church in the year 527 A.D., it contains important but much restored early Christian art, especially in, in its mosaics. Today, it's one of the ancient churches called Titilia, of which cardinals are patrons as cardinal deacons. Since 28 November 2020, the title's been held by Cardinal Mario Gretsch, or Gretsch, the Basilica, devoted to the two Arabian Christian brothers, doctors and martyrs and saints, Cosmos and Damian, is located in the Forum of Vespavian, also known as the Forum of Peace. A little bit on the history of this temple. The temple is traditionally held to have been dedicated by Emperor Maxinius to his son, co-consul Valerius Romulus, who died in 309 A.D., and was given divine, divine honors, the temple building was probably a part of a rebuilding program of incredible intensity undertaken by Maxentius in the area following a disastrous fire in 306 AD. The project was only partly complete at his death. The temple's identification with Valerius Romulus is tentative, based on the spot find of a coin dated to 307 A.D., showing the distinctive shape of the building and a nearby dedication to Valerius Romulus as a div divinized mortal. The temple was also has been speculated as a rebuilding of the original temple of Jupiter Stator, or one dedicated to Penates, restored by Mycenaeus. The temple was Christianized and dedicated to Sancti Cosma et Damianus in 527 AD when Theroditic the Great, king of the Ostrogoths, Ostrogoths and his daughter Amalasuntha donated the Library of the Forum of Peace and a portion of the Temple of Romulus to Pope Felix IV. The Pope united the two buildings to create a basilica devoted to two Arabian Christian brothers and saints, Cosmos and Damian. Contrast with the ancient pagan cult of the two brothers, Castor and Pollux, who had been worshipped in the nearby temple of Castor and Pollux. Uh, and I think there was two... Uh, 
uh, statues of Castor and Pollux on opposite sides uh, of the Roman Forum. We had discussed that earlier in an earlier video. The apse was decorated with Roman Byzantine mosaic representing a parousia, the second coming of Christ at the end time. The bodies of St. Mark and Marcellian were translated perhaps in the ninth century to this church where they were rediscovered in 1583 during the reign of Pope Gregory the 13th. In 1632, Pope Urban the Eighth ordered the restoration of the basilica. The works projected by Razio Torriani and directed by Luigi Origigusi raised the floor level seven meters, bringing it equal to the Cap of Asinia. That's avoiding the infiltration of water from a flood, flooding event or something. Also, a cloister was a cloister was added. The old floor of the basilica is still visible in the lower church, which is actually the lower part of the first church. In 1947, the restorations of the imperial forums gave a new structure to the stru church. The old entrance through the Temple of Romulus was closed and the temple restored to its original forms with, with the Pantheon. The Temple of Romulus is best preserved pagan temple in Rome. A new entrance was opened in, on the opposite side on Via Dea Fori Imperelli, whose arch gives access to the cloister and through this to the side of the basilica. Is structure and art. Next to the entrance of the complex, there are the rooms with the original mar marble paving of the form of peace, and the wall where the 150 marble slabs of Forma Urbis Romae were hung. Through the cloister, the entrance to the church opens on the side of the single nave. The plan of the basilica followed the norms of the Counter Reformation, a single nave with three chapels per side, and the big apes, which now looks quite oversized because of the reduction in height of the 17th century restoration, framed by the triumphal arch, also mutilated by that restoration. <clears throat> The mosaics are masterpieces of the 6th and 7th century art. In the middle is Christ, St. Peter, presenting St. Cosmos and St. Theodorus, right, and St. Paul, presenting St. Damien and Pope Felix IV. The latter holds a model of the church. All right. So, uh... So I'll talk a little bit about the emperor. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Let me get that off. Put the emperor on. All right. So we're talking about Maxinius. His reign was in 28 October 306 AD to 28 October 312. His predecessor was Emperor Constantine, Const, Constantius, Constantin, Constantius the first, and the successor Constantine the first. Sorry. All right. Uh, so the Emperor Marcus Aurelius Valerius Maxinius. Uh, Two eighty-three to. 28 October 312, uh, born in 283, circa before Christ, I guess, or BC. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> circa 283 to 28 October 312. He was a Roman emperor. Sorry about that. He reigned from 306 AD until his death in 312 AD. Despite ruling in Italy and North Africa and having the recognition of the Senate in Rome, he was not recognized as a legitimate emperor by his fellow emperors. He was the son of former emperor Maximia and the son-in-law of Emperor Galerius. The latter part of his reign was preoccupied with civil war 
aligned with Maximinus against Licinius and Constantine. The latter defeated him at the Battle of Milby, Milvian Bridge in 312, where Maxinius, with his army in flight, purportedly perished by drowning in the Tiber River. Maxinius was the last emperor to permanently reside in Rome. He attempted to embellish, restore, and improve the ancient capital, carrying out important building works, including the Temple of Divine Romulus, dedicated to his deceased son, Basilica Maxinius, which completed, was completed by Constantine, the villa, and the circus of Maxinius. His early life and family, uh, Maxinius was the son of Emperor Maximia and his Syrian wife, Eutropia. As his father became emperor in 285 AD, he was regarded as the crown prince who would eventually follow his father onto the throne. He seems not to have served, however, in any important military or administrative position during his reign of Diocletian and his father, the exact date of his marriage to Valeria Maximilla, daughter of Galerius, is unknown. He had two sons, Valerius Romulus, Romulus uh, circa 295 to 309, and an unknown son. Okay. In 305, Diocletian Maximia abdicated, and the former Caesarius Constantinius and Galerius became Augusti. Although two sons of emperors, Constantine and Maxinius, were available, they were passed over by the new Tetrarchy. The Valerius Severus and Maximidasa were appointed Caesars. Lactanius Epitome states that Galerius hated Maxinius and used his influence with Diocletian to see that Maxidius was ignored in the succession chain. Perhaps Di Diocletian also thought Maxidius was not qualified for, for the military duties of the imperial office. Maxidius retired to an estate some miles from Rome. When Constantius died in 306 AD, his son Constantine was crowned emperor on July 25th and then subsequently accepted by Galerius into the Tretriarchy as Caesar. This set the precedent for Maxinius' session later in the same year. All right, I think that's enough on that. Whew. All right, so I'll get rid of here. I'll just get pull the map up here. Let me make it up. Uh, so if you remember to the right, that little circle lower right-hand corner, that's the Colosseum. And there's two roads, Via Sacra Road and the Via de Fori Imperelli on the right there. So the church uh, is kind of on the Via Sacra side near, kind of, it's, it's in between, but it's, it's not like right on the road, but close. So yeah, kind of about halfway there. So yeah. So let me uh, go ahead and replay the video so that it's kind of a reinforcement just to, uh, after the reading, we'll, we always do a, uh, a second go around so that it's kind of reinforces the video. Catch you on the other side, all. The Basilica of Santi Cosma e Damiano is a church in the Roman Forum, parts of which incorporate original Roman buildings. The circular building at the entrance into the Forum, which is not used today, was built in the early 4th century as a Roman temple, thought to have been dedicated to Valerius Romulus, deified son of the Emperor Maxentius. The main building was perhaps the library of an imperial forum. It became a church in 527 and contains important but much restored early Christian art, especially in its mosaics. Today, it is one of the ancient churches called Tituli, of which cardinals are patrons as cardinal deacons. 
The current cardinal deacon of the Titulus, Cosme et Damiani, is Beniamino Stella, created cardinal on the 22nd of February 2014. The Basilica. All right. Well, today we uh, cover the current uh, church, uh, Santa Cosma et Damiano, also in English, kind of Basilica of Saints, Cosmas and Damian. Its uh, traditional name was the Temple of Romulus. It's located on the Palatine Hill, kind of in the middle there on the Via Sacra Road uh, on the left side. All right, if you obviously we're not going to do the table talk at 10 like normal, it, I'll have to do some more research and stuff. But if you'll catch us at 11 o'clock a.m., we'll do the table talk uh, podcast. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Kalen DeBoer. He is the new head coach for the University of Alabama Crimson Tide. He's the 28th and current head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide. The Alabama Crimson Tide college football team represents the University of Alabama. It's in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and is uh, in the Western Division of the Southeastern Conference. the Crimson Tide competes as part of the NCAA Division I football subdivision. <clears throat> Let's see. And uh, Kalen DeBoer, r- the recipient of six National Coach of the Year awards in 23, he was hired recently upon the retirement of Alabama head coach Nick Saban. He had uh, announced his retirement a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks now. So yeah, hated to see that happen. But he did. He he was head coach uh, Nick Saban for 17 seasons, and uh, had six uh, national championships at his as his coach. Uh, the University of Alabama Crimson Tide, and won national champ for LSU. So we congratulate him on his successful record as well as his uh, retirement. I believe he's got a new home or home in uh, Florida. So he's probably going to go there. Uh, the University of Alabama was gracious enough to keep him uh, his uh, office or a office uh, for him uh, always uh, available uh, whenever he's in town. So he'll have an active uh, role in the Princeton ties going forward into the near future. All righty. So uh, apologize for starting late, an hour late. Uh, couldn't really be helped. Uh, so catch us on the table talk. Uh, yep, and uh, got my coffee. And by the way, if you remember, I had made a commentary last week that I had paid seven dollars and thirty six cents for a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit at McDonald's. I was surprised. Well, today they. Get, Apparently gave me a extra cup of coffee because they handed me two coffees in the winter. Uh, we had to move, you know, because it was busy, moved to a parking spot, and they brought me an extra. So <laughs> they must have heard my comment. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I hope you have a great Saturday afternoon, and y'all take care of my friends. Join us on the Table Talk podcast at. 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Catch you next week.